Hello, and welcome to another 8-minute demo. Today we're going to be talking about the OIS SCOM Extensibility Kit 1.0, something recently added to the CodePlex website. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a tech evangelist, solutions architecture for the System Center suite of products. So today we're going to take a look at the OIS SCOM Extensibility Kit 1.0. So first we need to go and get it. We're going to go look it up here. Oh, Palace CodePlex. Community releases, downloads, OIS SCOM Extensibility Kit 1.0. Go ahead and download this. It's just a zip file. You just put it anywhere. Install is fine. We also go ahead and download the user guide, but I know how to use it, so but I recommend going ahead and downloading the user guide as well. It gives you a step by step setup. This video will cover that as well. Close this into the install. Looks like we have the source code here. We wanted to take a look at that. We also have the DLL. And the DLL is what we're going to be looking at today during this demonstration. We need a place to put it. We'll just create a new folder here. We'll just drop the DLL in here. That's really it for the install. So we could go ahead and close that up, and we're basically ready to go. Now I do want to check on a prerequisite, which is in the Program Files, Operations Manager, SDK Binaries. These two binaries are used in the uh, communication between this DLL that I created in Kick and SCOM itself. So we know that's there. That's good. We're going to be referencing this DLL right here. Now, if we go into Opalis Integration Server, I have a folder all ready for it. And what we need here is the Quick Integration Kit 3.0 integration pack, which is available once you install Kick. Might as well show you that location. It would be this integration pack right here. So there's the path. And there's the integration pack. Once you deploy that, you will get a Quick Integration Kit 3.0 integration pack on the right-hand side in the Objects panel. All we need to do here is drag this over, open it up, and this object example extensibility kit does not require any options configuration up here. So we're just going to grab the assembly, pick the class, and fill out the properties. So let's do that. Go to our quote-unquote install directory. Click on class, and this will enumerate the available classes. There's two of them, create subscription and delete subscription. So we want the create. And now if we go to properties, we can see we need to fill in some information. So SCOM server it happens to be on the same box as my Opalis demonstration machine. We can choose that. SMTP action GUID. I don't have that off the top of my head, so we're going to have to go grab that. I'll show you how to do that. Machine name. This is for cosmetics for the actual uh, subscription. So you'll see where that's being used. So I'm just going to type in uh, this Opalis demo VM. I could have chosen it from this pick list, though. Subscriber name, we'll use my name. And subscriber email, we'll use my email. All right, we still have one field to fill out, so let's go investigate how to get that. One of the other prerequisites in Operations Manager is to have an existing channel. And this is all built into the... Uh, DLL in the source code so you can see it there. I have created an existing channel here. It's an SMTP channel. You can see that I've just set up the, um, the settings for this email notification channel and the format. I used all defaults. Once you have successfully created or updated a channel, you can get this field that we want, we're looking for, this SMTP action GUID field from Operations Manager by exporting the following management pack. Notifications internal library. You can export this. I'm just going to put it on the desktop. And we're going to go take a look at that resulting XML file. The easiest place to find this is scroll all the way down to the bottom. And then we want this SMTP action GUID, which is right here. We're going to copy this. And this is the unique identifier for that specific action that will be generated. So when we create the subscription and the subscriber, it'll be using that. 
go back into the object, paste that into here, and then this object is completely configured. Let's go ahead and run this. So we can check that in. And before we run it, I want to show you there's nothing up my sleeve. Hit F5 here. I have no subscribers and no subscriptions. We're going to create one of each using this object. Let's go ahead and hit start. Looks like it's complete. Let's go take a look at Operations Manager. First check out, oh, there's a subscriber. Look at the values that were included. There's the name based on the object properties. The schedule, that was built into the, the source code. You could change that if you'd like. And then the addresses, we're using the uh, email channel. And this is something left over in the uh, source code. You could change that as well. Everything is customizable. These are just examples. So you can see I did not make these manually. I had the Opalis object use the SDK to make them. Let's check out the subscription. Hit F5. And there it is. You can see there's that uh, machine name that we typed in. Opalis Demo VM. This could be anything you want. This is just for the subscription name, but as an example for this, I've also used it in the criteria. I'm looking at a condition where raised by an instance of a specific group, and that instance of a specific group includes the actual name. And again, we're using the channel here. And you can modify whether there's alert aging in the source code, but for this example, it's set up in this way. We can see how that worked out. So, in summary, we've created a subscription and a subscriber using an existing channel. Now we're going to take a look at the other object. We'll check it out and rename this so we can see that they're, they are different on the screen. This is create subscription. Now we're going to pull out another invoke.net object. We'll, we'll disable this one for now. We'll rename this one to delete. Subscription, open her up, same assembly file, different class though, we're going to use the delete class, and we'll, you'll notice there's a couple different properties. SCOM server is still the same, so we could still grab that. Subscriber name, Charles Joy, that's going to key off the specific subscriber name in the subscribers. And then subscription good. There's another one of those tricky things, but we can accomplish uh, getting it the same exact way. So let's go back to management packs. We'll export this guy. We'll just replace the existing one. And then we'll go take a look at it. Once again, it's all the way at the bottom. You can see here is the subscription name, the friendly name. And this is the subscription GUID that we're looking for copy that and you see this is called my custom alert you could name this whatever you want in the source code I just kept it something generic so now if we go back to a palace open up our object again go to properties you could paste that in here now for for whatever reason you didn't want to use the XML you have the option to use published data from the previous object or if you stored the uh, published data from the create subscription in a persisted data source so let's take a look at the published data you have machine name uh, SCOM group GUID, SCOM group name, SCOM server, SMTP action GUID. So you could store all this information somewhere if you wanted to use it again later. And then, of course, subscription GUID is what we were looking for. So in this demonstration or example, and in the documentation you'll see this, you can use um, this published data to pass directly into the delete. But I, I can't think of a reason, unless you were just testing, you would want to create a subscription and then pass the GUID to delete the subscription. But that is available as published data, so you can certainly store that off somewhere. But it is easier, in my opinion, to just go and export XML for the management pack and then grab the GUID manually. Then you could pass it in. You could create a workflow where you pass the, the information in from the Opera Console, something simple like that. This guy is completely filled out. Now let's go ahead and execute this guy. Check it in. Start it up. And we should see, in a matter of moments, subscribers will go down to zero, and subscriptions will go down to zero. Let's hit F5 and see if we've had that happen. Yep, that one's gone, and that one is gone. Now you may ask yourself, why would I do all this? What would be the reason I would 
create want to create or delete the subscriptions automatically. Well, if you have an onboarding and offboarding use case, you could certainly use it for that. So if I wanted to create a subscription when someone's onboarded to a system specific to them and specific to the machine they're using or responsible for, I can do that. And then I, if I onboarded them, I likely would want to offboard them once they're uh, completed with their project or complete using that machine. We can then gather that information from a persistent data store or go export the XML and grab the information there. And we can go ahead and delete the subscription based on their offboarding process. These two objects which are really, uh, it's a DLL file with two object classes in them, are currently available on CodePlex. All you have to do is go ahead and bing Opal's CodePlex, and it's in the download section. You're more than welcome to uh, have at the source code, which, if we want to go take a look at that, is also in the kit. Let's see if we could open this guy up and take a look. So this is the standard... SDK usage for Opalis, and then I included obviously the Enterprise Management Framework for Operations Manager. You can see I determined the name of the Opalis object, the inputs and the outputs, and then what I'm publishing. And then of course there's a couple uh, classes down here where I'm getting the group GUID. I'm going to use that later on in the create subscription method. And you can see here this is the item that I hard coded for the example, but you can change that to whatever you want. You can also change this to whatever you want. So the uh, world's your oyster with this. I have given you the source code I've used to create uh, these integration pack objects using both the Opalis SDK and the Operations Manager SDK. I certainly hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it and maybe start exploring your own extensibility kits and extensibility options between Opalis and any of the other uh, system center or data center products you might have. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.